Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. Today we're going to talk about using the distributive property. The distributive property is just taking maybe a more challenging, larger multiplication problem and breaking it down into two smaller multiplications to be multiplication problems to be able to make it easier for us to solve. So our learning goal for today says, I can use the distributive property of multiplication to find related facts. So let's jump in and get started and see how we're going to do that. Before we begin, I need to make sure that you have your array template that looks like mine. You can print that out, it's in the module. And you're gonna to wanna to have your dry erase pocket with you because we're gonna use that um, this same array template for more than one problem today. So I don't want you to have to make more than one copy. So make sure you have your dry erase pocket and your array template and then let's jump in and get started. So what you're going to do first is I would like for you to shade the part of the array that shows five times four. So just grab your marker and just shade in five times four. Now remember the first number, the first um, factor is going to be the number of rows. So we have five rows and then there's four in each row. So I'm gonna shade just super quick, five rows. So I don't forget. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm just gonna fill in all the rest of those. It doesn't have to be perfect when you're shading them in. Do not waste time coloring them in perfect. It's just so you notice when you look at them those look like sixes, huh? So when you look at them, they stand out differently than the ones down in the bottom that are white, okay? So, and now that we've shaded in five times four, I want you to make a box around the part of the array that would show five times four plus one times four. So we already have five times four. Don't do this first row as your one times four. You have to add on to that five times four. So what that's going to look like is if you were to draw a box here. So I have my five times four, and then I have my one times four there at the bottom, okay? So now if we look at this, now really if what's the array or what's the multiplication um, expression that matches my box that I have drawn up there? That's six times four because now I have six rows with four in each one in that box, okay? So now what I would like for you to do is I would like for you to label each part of the array. So come up with an expression that matches each part of the array. So if I have the first shaded part, I want you to make what that multiplication um, expression would be. And then I want you to do one for just this bottom one that's unshaded. So if it helps, let me do the first one. So I would come up with five times four matches this shaded part of my array. Now you need to come up with what matches your unshaded part of your array. Okay, friends, so here's what I came up with. If you need more time, click pause, okay? So if I looked at this, one times four matches my unshaded, okay? Now, what I wanna look at with this, I'm actually gonna move these over to this side so I have a little bit more space to work, okay? Now I wanna see how can we combine our two equations, our two multiplication equations, our five times four equals 20 and our one times four equals four, okay? Into the find the total number of dots. So if I were to do that, I would come up with six times four because this whole array is really six times four. And then you could also break it down even more and come up with 20 plus four equals 24. Where do you guys think I'm getting this 20 plus four? Where's that coming from? Yeah, if you guys said that it came from my five times four is 20, there you go. And then my one times four is four. That's exactly where that came from, okay? So good job with that one, friends. Now we're gonna do the same process again, but with another set of numbers. Okay, so you guys are gonna use this problem. And when we look at this one, we're going to be modeling for this one. I want you to shade the part of the array that shows five times four. Okay, so same thing again. One, oh, let me go like this. Two, three, four, five, because that's five rows of four. Okay, fill it in. Go ahead, you guys can do this now too. Okay, once you finish that, 
then I would like for you to box an array that shows 5 times 4 plus 2 times 4. Okay, so just like we did in the last one, we did 5 times 4 plus 1 plus 4. Or sorry, we did 5 times 4 plus 1 times 4. Now we're doing 5 plus 4, or sorry, 5 times 4 plus 2 times 4. So what is that going to look like? Draw a box around that for me. Okay, so here's what I would do. There's my five, and I need two more. So there's my array of five times four plus two times four. Okay. Now I want you guys to label your array just like you did on the last one. So label both parts. Label the shaded and the unshaded. Okay, if you need more time, click pause. I would come up with five times four and two times four, okay? Now remember, we can also put this to back together into one multiplication equation as seven times four, because I'm really just taking this five, my five rows, and adding it to my two rows, and that's how I get my seven times four. Then you could break it down easier if you wanted to, and do the product of five times four, which is 20, plus the product of two times four, which is eight. So we're breaking it down instead of just solving seven times four and having to count that many times, seven times by four, we are breaking it down by counting by into the fives and into the twos to make it a little bit easier for us to solve this problem. But my question is for you, why do you think I asked you in both problems to solve using five times four? One, because it's a smaller number, right, than seven or eight or six. But the main reason why I did it is because you can count by fives to solve it because we know that the commutative property, you can flip those factors. So you really could have counted fives four times. You could have just gone five, 10, 15, 20 and had that problem solved much faster than having to count by fours seven times here. Okay, so it's easier to add. Anytime you can use a distributive property, which is just breaking apart those factors into something with a five, chances are it's gonna be easier for you to solve because you can skip count by five, it's much easier, right friends? Yeah, okay. All right, so let's jump in. We're gonna use this same array template, but now what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to take it out of the pocket and fold the template so only eight of the 10 rows are showing. So right now you have all 10 rows showing. I want you to just fold up like the bottom two or fold down the top two so you only have eight showing. And we're only gonna use the array that's left. So we're only gonna use the part that has the eight rows. So what do you guys think is the multiplication um, fact that goes along with this? What expression are we finding? Yeah, eight times four. Excuse me, friends. Okay, so I want you to use the same strategy that we used in the first two problems of practice today to be able to solve this problem. So I want you to be able to draw, um, break apart however you choose, okay? I think probably that five times four again would be way helpful because we've done that now. This will be the third time, so you guys probably know that one by now. But anything by fives is always super helpful for us. Then I want you to label the shaded and unshaded part and then try and find out like the total of what we came up with for the last time. What's the total um, multiplication expression for this problem? Okay, so pause the video, um, shade your array, label the shaded and unshaded part, and then click uh, play to be able to resume and we'll share what we came up with. Okay friends, so here's what I came up with. Okay, so, oh wait, five times four. I forgot to do that first part. <laughs> One, two, Three. I don't want to make that look like a six because that would be tricky. So four, five. Oh, that's another six. Okay, fill them all up. Remember, like I said, don't worry about things being perfect. Just do a little scribble in each one so it looks different than the ones that are unshaded in the bottom. Okay, so there's my five times four because that helps me to be able to break this problem down. Now I broke it down into three times four is my next part. So I'm gonna box around that. So I have five, six, seven, eight. Let's move this up just a tiny bit. Okay, there's my eight. So really, this side of my equation is five times four. This other side down here is gonna be 
3 times 4. And if it's helpful, you can kind of draw a line across like that to be able to see the difference. Okay. Now, what I noticed is that I break that apart into 5 times 4 is really 20, so I put that over here. And then my 3 times 4 is 12, so that's where I'm getting my 20 plus 12. This next part down here, it says 8 times 4 equals 5 times 4 plus 3 times 4. How do you know that this is true? Because I'll give you a hint. It is true. But how do you know that that's true? Yeah, because we can break apart. Let me get my magic. We can break apart this larger fact of 8 times 4 into this smaller 5 times 4 plus 3 times 4. Because I'm really taking this, let me get a different, well, I'm really taking this 8 times 4, I'm taking this 8 and I'm breaking it apart into 5 and 3. Because 5 plus 3 equals 8. That's where that's coming from, okay? Notice here, I'm not messing with this 4 at all. It stays the same. So make sure that when you're using the distributive property, you're only taking one of the factors and breaking it apart, okay? That's why this four right here stayed the same in all three parts of the problem, okay? So don't ever break apart both factors, only one. Okay, so now what I want you guys to notice or to see or try, I actually want you to try and draw this. I want you to try and draw a number bond, okay? to show how we break apart, broke apart these um, factors with the eight. How do we break that apart? Remember a number bond is the circle with the little circles off the side, okay? Pause it to have more time. If you're stumped on the number bond, I'm just gonna share with you, okay? So here's a number bond that I came up with. I have eight fours, that's my total. All right, let me come back up here. There's my eight fours, and I broke it down into five fours and three fours. So eight fours really equals five fours plus three fours, okay? Just so you guys know where all these numbers are really coming from, okay? In five times four and three times four, um, are the size of the group still the same in both of those? So if I have my five times four, here's my size of the group. Are they the same? Yeah, they sure are, okay? So even though I'm changing the five and the four with that eight, the size of the group still remains the same. I've chosen that factor to remain the same and not change, okay? Let's look at this. Oh, I have one more piece here hiding for you, okay? So four represents the size of the groups. The expression five times four plus three times four shows how we distribute those groups of four. So since the size of the group is the same, we can add the five fours plus the three fours to make eight fours, okay? So notice all that they're doing, let me grab my marker here, okay? So we talked about this way, eight times four equals five times four plus three times four. All that they're doing now is they're taking this eight, they're breaking the five and the three, but they're choosing to put that together first, okay? This whole part right here is modeling the exact same thing, okay? You have your five and your three. They're chunking those together to make it right here in the underlined part, and they're keeping that four the same, okay? So long story short, friends, remember, just notice how we're only breaking apart one of those factors. We're breaking apart that eight, and the four remains the same in both parts of the problem, okay? So I know that's a lot of information at you at one time, and there's a whole lot of things. Just think about it as one of the factors is getting split into two smaller ones, and then they're multiplying. That's all that it is, okay? We'll keep practicing this strategy more and more. Don't worry, okay? But other than that, you guys did a fantastic job today. I'm super proud of all the hard work that you guys had done. Okay, please head back over to the module to see if you have any other um, or what your independent practice is for today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I hope you guys have an awesome, wonderful, fantastic day, and I will see you all soon. Bye, friends. Bye.